old golf club repair. We're gonna have fun with this one. Welcome back to the Big Golf Shop, Jim McCleary. And you remember when Callaway started? Most people don't. They started about 1982. Uh, Ely Callaway uh, started off with, you know, he bought a hickory shafted uh, company and it grew from there. Well, that's just the, we'll get real basic with it. And what he made was the S2 H2 irons. And what shortly followed was one of those. All right, this is a three wood. This is the S2 H2 Callaway three wood bore through. And that is what we are going to fix now. So the, you know, you guys have seen me do other bore throughs, but this is a classic model. Now what we really have to, we have to find out here about this guy is that, all right, right there. This has got an O-ring, O-ring ferrule on it. So O-ring with a collar. And I do believe that they do make them, but it was really, really, really weak. Okay, and that's what nobody really liked them. And we used to put them on, but then they would come back. And then I figured out a very, another ferrule that'll work and I'll show you. And it doesn't look bad and, it's, and it does a much better job. So first thing we got to do is take this thing off. So watch this. In order to do this, we're going to need a knife and we're going to need some heat. So what we're going to do now, this is back in the day, that paint is very, very soft. So you got to be very, very careful on how you, uh, how you deal with this. So you go around very, very quick. And you get out of here. See it already steaming? That's about all you need. And then you, you get in underneath the collar and you just pull down. And I don't have enough heat yet. One more time. Try this again. There we go. Now it's coming out. And this thing is just a real pain in the butt to do it like this. I have to give you a little bit more. I'm going to do it down this way. All right, I got most of it out of there. Not all of it, but I got quite a bit. All right, so after heating and pulling, I got a little bit more to get. Let me get it. All right, the last bit, I just tore off the last little bit of it. I don't know if you can see it there, but so now it's all gone. And that important part is because we're going to use this to push on. All right, now you got to contend with the bore through. Right, you got to contend with the bore through, so we got to throw some heat here. We're going to throw a little bit of heat here. We're going to throw a little bit of heat here, and a little bit of heat here, in order to in order to make this thing let go. Okay, and I'm going to see. All right, last bit. I just I wanted to confirm before I start talking about it. All right, in the day when you had shaft pullers, uh, it would try and rest on this shoulder, and there's enough of it here for it to get. But what would happen every once in a while is it would slip and it would cut it, and so that was a that was a problem, right? So what we what I had made or I bought, and somebody was making it for us, is that it was this, and what that does, since it's a broken shaft, it goes up in there and it basically pushes against. It pushes against the, not, not necessarily the shoulder, but that area. And that's what we're gonna heat up and that's what we're gonna pull. So let's go to the bench. Well, I can't tell you if our technology is a wonderful tool until it doesn't work. What we did is we heated up the back side, we heated up this side, we heated up that side, and we heated up that side in 10 uh, second increments. So 10, 10, 10, 10, that's 40. And then I went back around and did it all again in 10 because you don't want to put a whole lot of heat right on top of each piece a lot at a time. You got to let it kind of soak in because this paint is, is so soft. Then what I did is I was able to just use the regular shaft puller because 
this has basically a really small hosel. So we were able to use that. Then I cleaned it out with a, with a wire brush and a drill. That guy. And then what I did is I went around with the buffing wheel and all the discoloration I removed with the buffing wheel. And it will turn a different color, but it's not like permanent. But you gotta, you, you gotta watch this because this paint is just so soft that you gotta let it, it's funny, you gotta kinda let it get warm like it is now. I can't keep my fingers on it just all that time frame. And that's just about perfect to just barely, lightly touch it to get it off there. So now we've got a head that's ready to rock and roll and now we gotta put the shaft in it. So let's do that. The shaft we've selected to put in here is the Acra FX, all right, Afra, Acra FX uh, 3.0 fairway wood, all right? You don't hear that too often. The re why did I choose this? Because this is a shaft that is specifically designed for fairway woods. And this club is small and heavy, which just fits this profile pretty good. And I, again, like we did with the green one I did on my last build with the PXGs, we got this and it's got a shadow, uh, a shadow label. And what we're going to do is we're going to split the difference. If you look at the graphics here, there's arrows that go straight up and down and they're going to split the graphics. I think that's where I'm going to find the flow because of the lines that are already marked. That's what we're going to try and do is split it. I think I can hold the club now. What it does is going to go through. It's going to go through there. It's a little bit wobbly, so we're going to have to look at that one pretty hard. Anyway, we're going to go through there. We're going to get it up there as tall as we can. And then what we're going to use is a tip pin. And tip pin just basically goes in there and it fills all of the it fills all of the void that's left of the hole that's in the shaft. Now the real question is whether or not we want to use a small diameter one. That doesn't look real good, right? And that would be kind of the closest one as far as shape. But it's one that looks normal. When it looks normal and will sit in there normally, it's probably something like that. It's big enough and round enough. So we're going to protect the hose a little bit more with the slightly bigger one and then we are going to glue this all together. So let's go to the bench for that. So while I was putting this together, I ran into, a, had to go clean some golf balls from the range, but came back and it dawned on me that that, yeah, that's awful loose. So I measured it and found out that it is a 350 tip. It is a 350 tip. See that? I can even see right through there. All right, it's a 350 tip, and that changes everything. Now, this is a 335, and that's too much wobble in order to be secure. Now, there's a couple of ways I could have done this. I could have used the, the original ferrule that I was wanting to use, but when I realized what I was looking at on top, it wasn't covering this whole area. So, what I came across is something else, an adapter. All right, this adapter is a 335 to 350 adapter fits right in there and you say well Jim yeah it doesn't uh, doesn't look like the original you are correct however I don't think it looks gross you know it almost looks like it's part of it and what it does is it 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 uh, adapts down to about this point and then that point it, it's a solid fix so that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna braid this tip we're gonna insert that part and then we're going to put the uh, tip point in and then we're going to let it set for 24 hours. All right, it's the next day and I use the 24 hour glue. Why did I do that? And that's because I wanted to be able to adjust this as necessary. When I have the, the 3M glue, it's you, you get it, you turn around, you look back and it's already setting. That's not what I'm looking for for this. I want to be able to manipulate it, well, just in case, right? And, and it, and if you let it set for 24 hours, everything's cured. It's just as strong, and that's where we're at. Now, I've already done the, done the ferrule, and we had to do a ferrule because we found out that the shaft or the hosel diameter accepted a 350 shaft, not a 335 shaft. Kind of unique for something like this. Even in the day, they did have that stuff, but I didn't think it was common to this. So, 
in order for that to happen, it was like a twofer. We put in this adapter and what it does is it acts as a, as a buffer, makes that connection stronger in this area where it was always the weakest. So, and I don't think it looked too bad when we put it in there. So we got to get rid of this and we use a, I just use my back saw and you guys have seen me do this a couple of times on some other ones. And all we're doing is making a notch and it's gone. All right, we're going to go over to the jet grinder and we're going to take this off. So the thing we want to look at here is if you look, there's a lot, the grain goes this way, right? Although we're hitting this way, <laughs> the grain goes that way. So that's how we're going to take a lot of this off. We're going to take it with the grain so it looks really nice. So the first part we're going to do is we're going to take it with a sander because that eats a lot of this away. And then we're going to move into probably a blue belt in order to dress up what it looks like. So let's go over there. All right, we got the, uh, the sandpaper's already on there. It's about a 100 grit. We don't want to get too aggressive with it. All right, we get everything started. I get my air going, turn this on, and then we're going to take this off. What you can see is that we started marking it up a little bit. It's almost flat, but we're not quite there yet. What we have is where the extra glue is at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that with a knife so it's nice and clean so when we go to use the blue belt that it doesn't have to work against that. So let me get a knife. Now, of course, when we're doing this, we're really not worried about whether or not we're scratching the metal because, well, we're going to clean it up, right? But we want a, a decently sharp knife to take off all that excess in order to clean it. So now that's what we got. All that extra is gone. And now we're going to smooth it all out. It's basically shaping. All right, so the way the blue belt, the blue belt is kind of a uh, more dense version of my wavy wheel. And it, e it doesn't eat as much as the red. And it leaves a nice satiny finish. And that's kind of what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to work this over. And then we're just going to dress up these sides to make it to blend in what we did here to there to look at to make it look like it, we never did anything to it now the other part here is that we want to you know you got to this is all painted around here so there's no lifting it's just straight in straight in straight in in order to ensure that you don't go into the paint I just wanted to I wanted to show you that's what it looks like that's kind of what we're shooting for there's the original this is that now it's a little bit shiny I'm gonna kind of clean up that bottom a little bit and some more of the top there we go we're gonna hit it again because it's pretty smooth now and then we're gonna make it all look like that So there's the new look, all right, so now it looks new. So if I want to tone it down a little bit, I can take it to the wavy wheel and we'll see what we do with that. All righty, and there you go. And that's what it looks like. So now all we have to do is, I'm going to clean up just a little bit. It's got a different look when we, like I got a little something there. Let me get that. There we go. Just one of those, one of those things. You're always looking and you're always seeing all these notches and stuff that come up. So there you go. That's what it looks like. And there it is. 
And we've got this all cleaned up. All we do is make it shiny. We got to cut the Acura shaft. We got to cut the Acura shaft down to the right length and put a grip on it. And we're all done. All right. So our man decided on a 360 grip, and it just so happens that it's a 360 grip Callaway to go on an old Callaway. So new meets old. Now, how do we know it's all done? I always tell you this. All right, it's all done. Away we go. So we got to put on our grip. Uh, and our and our golfer wanted it stiff and let me tell you it is stiff so he should like this he'll be able to chase it and uh, it'll stay with him very very good so let's clean up and talk about it so we got the 360 grip on it I throw a coat of wax on it and that's what you're seeing here so the Callaway S2 H2 is one of the first fairway woods that came out from that line uh, and much like things of that day they were very very small all right just about big enough to circle a golf ball to be honest with you uh, they're made out of steel different types of steel I'm sure depending on the manufacturer and they had painted surfaces all over them and as you the painted surfaces are you see maybe some on the on the crown and on the back anymore but hardly ever on the face and that was what would wear and you just start seeing it a little bit right there not too much it's a good little one now the the models all these models that had these bore throughs this was the, always the weak point and that was always where it broke and and so what we used to do is just put these little bitty slightly larger ferrules on them so that it would make it stronger and it seemed to it seemed to do pretty good well so when you get into this part here you got to understand in some of them there's really long pieces that makes it stiffer but in these smaller ones right here uh, it that takes place of our that takes place of the where you would normally put it into the hosel and it sometimes it tends to make it play a little more flippy so you got to really watch what kind of profile that you're putting in there this one being a fairwood profile fits the bill just right because it's a little stiffer at the bottom keeping this thing from over torquing or anything like that now for all you guys that are asking me because I, I learned my lesson the last time right that guy uh, what was the swing weight swing weight at 43 inches was d6 uh, that's impressive d6 uh, so which means to tell me that this thing was probably meant to be about 42 and a half but uh, the, the golfer that we're making it for, his current three wood is 43 and a half, and that's standard. So I took it down to 43, mostly for a cosmetic effect. This thing is so small, in order for it to actually not look silly, uh, you get it to a small, shorter length. So that's where we're at, guys and gals. If you run into something you got like that and you got a question, put it in the show notes below. If you get a little bit out of your depth and you need a little help with a repair, give us a call or email us at mcgolfshop at roadrunner.com and we will help you out just like we did right here um, if you got any other questions you, same uh, same email address or 740-941-4653 and we'll help you out as always guys let's see your scores go low